Hey everyone, Travis here from Travis.media. So the guys over at Cube Careers, which is sort of a Kubernetes job board site, they went and pulled 293 job listings from October to December of 2023 and based it on this criteria. Number one, they were jobs that require Kubernetes experience. Number two, it had a clear salary range. And three, they were actually listed by companies, not recruitment agencies. And they took these listings, they manually reviewed them and analyzed them for certain patterns and trends. And in this video, I wanna share 10 observations from this effort that will help help you pinpoint what Kubernetes technologies you should be learning and what technologies you can probably pass on. As you know, the Kubernetes ecosystem is massive. There's tools for everything and you can't learn it all. So you have to be selective to be sure you're learning the right things. So let's look at these 10 observations to help you on your journey. And a brief mention about my newly launched coding community called Imposter Devs, a place for non-traditional developers to fill the gaps in their learning in a community. This coming Tuesday, we're kicking off our DSA for non-traditionals series of live events. So be sure to check that out. Currently on a 50% site launch sale. Number one is software engineers need base Kubernetes experience. If we look here, we see that of all the jobs that they pulled in Q4, 35% of these were software engineer positions that required Kubernetes experience. Next in popularity at 11% and 9% were platform engineer and the SRE role. And then of course, DevOps engineer. But 35% of those were software engineering positions. So much for the days of software engineers being software engineers, and then Kubernetes engineers being DevOps and SRE roles. This means that software engineers should at least try to take a basic course on Kubernetes, or at least know how it works on a surface level. We can't continue to ignore it. If you need a quick 15 minute overview, I did a video a few weeks ago that may help you out. I'll put a link to that above. But you at some point will bump up against it. Over 50% of Fortune 500 companies have adopted Kubernetes. And according to one study by Flexera, 78% of medium to small size organizations have already adopted Kubernetes for managing containerized applications. Don't think that you can get away in the coming years without a baseline understanding of it. Second finding, companies are seeking mostly mid to senior engineers to manage Kubernetes. Of all the jobs published in Q4, 60% were for senior level positions. And then mid-level positions came in at 21%. So here's senior, mid-level, principal, lead, architect, C-level. Unfortunately, there were no entry-level positions in Q4. And that's because it's a complicated technology and not really suited for entry-level software engineers to manage outside of simple tasks. So if you're trying to land a junior dev role, you can probably skip on this for now. Number three, certifications are not required. That's pretty standard though. Most don't require it, but it really does help break the ice up front as to you knowing something or not without having to give a demonstration first. In a worst case scenario, it can't hurt you. In the best case scenario, it can help you a lot. But when it's mentioned, AWS accounts for more than 40% of these jobs. So out of these 9% that required it, 40% of those were AWS certifications. And that makes sense. Lots of people are AWS certified and lots of listings ask for it. And if you look at the CKA, it's pretty low at 14%. But look, if you pass the CKA, you know your stuff. It's not a teach to the test certification. It requires good Kubernetes knowledge. And I always think it's valuable to have a cert on your resume, regardless if it's required or not. Number four, the most popular technology for Kubernetes jobs is Docker. 60% of the jobs pulled mentioned Docker. And that's obvious because Docker and Kubernetes, they kind of go hand in hand. One creates and manages individual containers and the other orchestrates many of them. After Docker, you have Postgres, which is always something good to learn, and then Kafka. Number five, what programming language is most in demand with Kubernetes jobs? And it's overwhelmingly Python. More than half the jobs, 52%, published in Q4, mentioned the need for Python experience. Then following that, it's Java, Go, and JavaScript. Now, Go makes sense because Kubernetes, Docker, Istio, and Terraform, they're all written in Go. In Python, regardless how you feel about it, it's used everywhere for everything. It's just so easy to write scripts and automation and web apps and whatever with it. And then JavaScript, is everywhere. Now, before we get to number six, let's hear a word from today's sponsor and Kubernetes AI cost saver, Cast AI. So Cast AI is the leading all-in-one platform for Kubernetes automation, optimization, security, and cost management. You simply deploy a lightweight, read-only agent onto your Kubernetes cluster, and from there, you get three free features that work within 60 seconds. First, you get a savings report telling you how much you could save by optimizing instance sizes and types based on your usage. Two, you get a cost monitoring dashboard, breaking things down over time by tags, labels, namespaces, etc. And third, 
Third, you get a security report that scans your cluster for vulnerabilities and automatically prioritizes the fixes. And that's all free. If you move to a paid plan, then you get much more. You can set automation and it will, around the clock, monitor your cluster and rebalance pods to optimal configurations. And of course, like with any secure product, you remain in control with Cast AI's policies that allow you to specify rules and limits. And you continue to see your savings and changes made as your cluster gets upscaled and downscaled. It will even utilize spot instance automation with fallback that moves you back to on-demand while there's no capacity. And it's free to try out. Why not? But check this, if you use the link below, you'll get the paid optimization feature that I just mentioned for free for your first cluster. So check out the link below to take advantage of this deal today. Back to the video. Number six, which CI CD tools are most popular? So of all the jobs published in Q4, 42% mention a requirement for CI CD experience. Over 50%, they didn't even mention it. But when it is mentioned, GitLab tops the charts at 30% of the total tags. Jenkins comes in second, obviously, and then CircleCI. Now GitLab is awesome. It's totally underrated. In my first corporate dev job, we used GitLab and I loved it. And I think here it mentions that Jenkins and GitLab go back and forth. Jenkins is always a popular option. And then some people are like, should I learn Travis CI? And I'm always like, no, just watch Travis Media. Number seven, GitOps knowledge is not really needed, but if so, go with Argo CD. Of all the jobs published in Q4, only 7% mention the need for GitOps experience. It's not really something you're gonna see on resumes, like must know GitOps, but I feel like knowing Kubernetes, you probably should know it, but it's not a requirement, according to this survey. When I was in my SRE role, we had to use GitOps, and we actually use Flux, which is way down here compared to Argo CD. So if you wanna learn one, you wanna get into GitOps, Go with Argo CD. It accounts for 95% of these jobs pulled. Number eight, what configuration management tools are most popular when it comes to Kubernetes? And the answer, you already know it, Terraform. Looking at the numbers, they don't seem so important. Only 21% of the jobs posted in Q4 mentioned a need for configuration management tool experience. Terraform is at the top as usual with 33% of mentions. And then there's Ansible and then Puppet and Chef. So Terraform, if you gotta learn one, Terraform. So don't go and try to learn ARM templates specifically because they just don't have that demand and they lock you into Azure. Terraform doesn't. Number nine, the most popular cloud provider when it comes to Kubernetes is, I think you can guess, AWS. First of all these jobs, more than 90% revealed their infrastructure location. So lots of mention of the cloud here. That's why I always say in 2024 and beyond, Everybody needs to have cloud experience, especially software developers. You gotta have experience in the cloud because everybody's in the cloud, everybody's moving to the cloud, and all of these job listings are going to mention it. Now, which cloud? You could really go with any, but AWS always leads the way. More than 41% of these mentioned AWS as their preference. And then its second was GCP and Azure fighting with one another, though I think Azure is pretty underrepresented here. It's a very popular cloud. Not as popular as AWS, but that doesn't really say a lot. You don't always wanna to go to the most popular thing, but importance of cloud knowledge, that's where it's at. You don't have to get certified, but take a course on one of the major clouds. And I'll put some recommendations below. And then number 10, monitoring, logging, and observability tools. What do you need to know? Well, only 22% of these jobs mention the need for observability tools. And when they did mention it, Prometheus is at the top, and Grafana comes in second. And that's because Prometheus and Grafana, they go together. Prometheus actually comes out of the box with Grafana. So if you get one, you get the other, and that may be why they're together. So this is an easy one, just learn both. Get familiar with those two. Don't worry about Datadog or Splunk or Elk, which I've used in the past, and also includes Kibana, that's what the K is, but just stick with the top two. So those are my 10 observations from this study. And if you're trying to land a Kubernetes job this year, then these recommendations may help you out. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video.